Good morning and welcome back. It is now August the 12th. Things are looking uh, to be an interesting week this week. We should have some pretty warm daytime temperatures with high humidity and the chance of thunderstorms pretty much all afternoon, all week long. So it'll be uh, probably some challenging harvesting conditions, especially for fields like this barley behind me, which is getting very ripe. As you can see, this barley field is well into ripening now. However, when you feel the heads, I don't even have to get out the mini combine to tell you this is still pretty tough, but it should rapidly dry down. It's still pretty humid and cool here this morning, but this should dry down this afternoon and basically be harvestable, I would think. I might come back and check this with the little mini combine later on today. Here we have a canola field with very minimal color change so far. You can tell by the overall appearance of it, it is very, very close to changing. And you can see some pods starting to show a little bit of toughening on them. But when we sweep 10 sweeps in here, you can see we are developing an absolute monstrous pile of ligus in here now. So you can see we're probably well over 100 ligus in 10 sweeps if not 200 ligus in 10 sweeps. So we are well, well over threshold. However, at this point, it starts to become a delicate balancing act between ligus thresholds and the maturity of the canola and the pre-harvest interval of any insecticide you could spray. So this field is still, you know, more than two weeks away from harvest. So we st could still come in here with something along the lines of silencer. But as these pods develop and mature every day that goes by, they are less and less susceptible to ligus damage. However, you can see, if you look at this pod right here, I'll zoom in on it, you can see some little pools of liquid on it here. And that is from the ligus draining those pods. So that will make this field a little bit sticky. So we're, we're still in time for an insecticide application in here to probably make a difference and save a little bit of yield. So I'm going to be recommending that in this field. Here by Carmen Gay, we have another very green canola field. There's very little sign of ripening in this field. We're probably still at least a week or two away from seeing any general signs of ripening. And with 10 sweeps in here, we once again have an absolute pile of ligus. You know, probably around 200 or more, about half of which I would say are big enough to count towards threshold. So this is definitely a field that we should be spraying as it's still going to be standing in the field for a while. All these pods on the top of the plant are all still quite green and are susceptible to feeding damage. So we would be well advised to get this field sprayed in the next couple of days here. Oh, my wheat plots by Nobleford are looking pretty good. There is a little bit of saw fly in here, so we do have a little bit of, you can see some stems kind of lodged down there, but I uh, should be able to compensate for that because I am harvesting by hand. I should be able to pick all those guys up. So we're just uh, basically waiting for things to dry down and finish ripening at this point. It is still fairly tough, but I also just found a frog out here. So that's not something I usually find out in wheat fields this time of the year, but uh, yeah, I guess those recent rains are driving a little bit of amphibious life in the field and he's welcome to come in here and eat all the bugs he can find. Here's another canola field with high legus numbers. However, as you can see this field, normally I wouldn't even be sweeping this. I'm just doing it for an example here today. You know, there's obviously, there's no point in spraying ligus in a field like this. This field was showing some signs of maturity last week and now it's getting very close to desiccation timing. So these pods on the top are pretty much, you know, they're, they're ripening, they're brown, they're leathery. The ligus are no longer really gonna do any damage to them at all. Yeah, there is still the odd, you know, green pod here and there in the field like you can see this plant right here you know and they will you know potentially still be doing some damage on these pods but these are these are very minor and realistically these are just going to turn to pepper going through the combine in the first place so really not that much of an issue these plants are getting pretty mature in this field so um, it's difficult to do this while holding the camera in one hand main stem was basically 100 percent color change on the side branches you know i'm about 50 percent of the way up you can see i still have good color change and i'm pretty sure that's going to hold true right to the very top here let's see if i can do this one-handed yeah so we're we are color changed here but it is kind of a brown color i'm noticing this quite a bit across a lot of fields i think they were just so moisture deficient when they were developing that you know we're we're not going to see great color in a lot of these canola seeds this year i don't think you know on dry land anyways you can see these guys are are pretty small and not a very attractive color 
Well, the headlands of this canola field is seeing quite the explosion of grasshopper numbers. You can see they are rapidly starting to defoliate and chew through the pods on this canola. So, of course, this canola field, like many others, has seen a population boom of lagus. So, while the edge of this field here is starting to mature, the inside of it is still very, very green. Even a couple flowers left here and there. So, we are going to be spraying this field for lagus anyway, so we will take care of the grasshoppers at the same time. Here we got some barley coming off this afternoon, so hopefully we don't get any thunderstorms to shut things down tonight. But so far, sounds like this barley is coming off pretty decently. We're averaging about 80 bushels to the acre. However, the bushel weight is a little bit light, and I'm not surprised because it didn't get rained on for a long, long time and didn't have quite enough moisture to fill out as nice as we'd like it. But still, it's probably the best dry land harvest we've had on barley for a couple years now. Here in this field of former silage rye, we do have some oats with some brassicas being grown in here for some fall grazing. You can see the oats mostly were, you know, two to three leaf stage now, uh, relatively light seeding rate on them. Brassicas come, has come up fairly well, but you can see it is really getting chewed by flea beetles at the moment here. I would say it's getting, you know, relatively close to threshold for flea beetles so the same threshold would apply to this as it would to canola about 25 percent defoliation some plants i'd say are there some are not you can see this one here has been chewed pretty damn good others not nearly so bad so it is uh you know still worthwhile to keep an eye on this if you do want some quality grazing a lot of these forage brassicas can be pretty hard hit by flea beetles as well as army worms in the coming weeks as other crops get you know harvested and the insects tend to move into these green crops also the brassica here if you allow the flea beetles to be uncontrolled in here i would expect very high amounts of flea beetles to be present in this field for next year so if you're putting brassica in like this for a fall crop please do not expect to be putting canola in this field next year Back along the edge of that oat field where we had a severe problem with grasshoppers a couple weeks ago, you can still kind of hear them singing around me. And there is still the odd one in the crop here and there, but you can see underneath we just have absolute drifts of dead grasshoppers. So that corrigin has still been working and is still working. And the actual numbers of grasshoppers is much reduced. You just don't even see them hardly jumping around on the canopy when you walk anymore. So that is really nice to see. I would say this application of corrigin was a huge success at protecting the rest of this oat field. Well, most of the cornfields are looking really good this week. I am right now, I'm in a field of Pride 1027, which is one of my favorite varieties of corn for west of Lethbridge. Things are looking really good here. We got lots of good tassels coming out. We're busily dropping pollen and we are silking really nicely down at the bottom here. So things are looking pretty good. We got excellent yield potential in this field, even though there is a little bit of uh, leaf tattering and tearing here and there from some of the high winds we've been having as these thunderstorms sweep past us. But overall, right now, things are looking really good. This field was fall rye that was used for grazing cattle. And as you can see, by the time the cows moved off here, there was quite the flush of kosher coming through. This is pretty low saline, pretty poor quality ground. And you can see here, we got some nice strips in the field. So this was sprayed about 14 days ago with the glufosinate product to try to get all this kosher under control because it is group two, four and nine resistant kosher. And you can see we had a sprayer plug. So uh, always make sure you check your nozzles while you're spraying because this pattern repeats throughout the field and it's rather dramatic looking. Well, this field of safflower doesn't look a whole lot better than it did when I looked at it last week. You can see there's still very little green leaf material left, even after that little bit of moisture. There is the odd green leaf here and there, but I think at this point, these, these heads are gonna really, really struggle to fill. There's just not gonna be enough horsepower left in the plant to fill any seeds out. But I guess we will see. There's still quite a few weeks left before these guys get to that stage, so we'll see. Well, not every field is over threshold for Ligus. This irrigated field by Colehurst is coming along pretty well. And you can see, well, I did get quite a few pods in here. But uh, Ligus numbers, really not too bad. Certainly a lot less than what I've been finding in some other fields where you get one or 200 in 10 sweeps. You know, I probably got barely 10 large Ligus in here in 10 sweeps. Well, my wheat plots down by McGrath are coming along pretty nice, but there's still quite a few green heads mixed in here. So I did just do a little mini combine sample on some of the surrounding wheat. You can see we got quite a few greens in there. Moisture content is over 30% in there. So we're still definitely at least a week away, just starting to swath some of the outside rounds of this field. So hopefully they don't swath my plots. 
This week we do have some disease starting to appear in some of these silage oats. This is very common this time of the year. We see it pretty much every year. Last year was a little bit of an exception. We didn't see a whole lot of it last year, but you can see all this color change on these leaves down here and some starting to turn this kind of stereotypical pinkish orangey color here so that pretty much indicates that we have a case of yellow dwarf in here now yellow dwarf is transmitted by insects from plant to plant so if you have high aphid populations or leaf hoppers then that is how it spreads it generally has an incubation period in the plant of almost two weeks before you see visual symptoms so when you start seeing symptoms like this in the field with some of these stunted plants like this you know it's very possible that a lot of these other plants here are affected as well you're just not seeing any symptomology on them yet there is no cure there is nothing you can do the only real prevention is to control insects but this time of the year trying to control aphids is kind of like herding cats you can if you spray for them you end up killing all of the beneficials in the field and the aphids will be back in a week stronger than ever well, we got about a quarter of an inch overnight on Thursday night here, so field conditions are pretty damp and wet. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of harvesting going on, and there is more rain in the forecast for today, but it is supposed to really improve over the weekend and warm up for next week, so I'm sure we'll be back at it soon. If you have canola fields that are still very green, you should be getting out and getting those swept or getting somebody like me out to do it and check on those Ligus numbers because they are continuing to explode. Anyways, with that, we'll call it a week. We'll see you next time.